is so good to be here together. Is it good to be in church today? Come on, online, get after some of them comments. Hey, it's good to be here today in the house of the Lord. Hey, my name's Kyle with my wife, Care. We get to be the pastors here at View Church. Absolutely love it. And we just believe in, we believe in learning. We believe in growing as, as a community, as a church. And we take the summer and, and, and teach a series called Summer Reading Series. Everybody get really excited for reading. Amen? Amen. Come on, all these books that we are suggesting for you to read or to learn about are, are, are based on Scripture that comes out of the Bible, biblical principles, be able to teach us more about what the Word of God says, the greatest book ever written. And, and I, I read a book um, about 10 years ago that I now read every single year called A, a Tale of Three Kings. Everyone say, A Tale of Three Kings. It's written by Gene Edwards, and it, and it goes through this story map from King Saul to King David to King David's son, Absalom. And it poses the question, which king are you? Which attitude do you have? Which countenance do you have? Are, are, are you a Saul? Are you a David? Or are you an Absalom? And I want us to take this book and this premise, one, I'd encourage you to read it, but I want us to take a moment out of chapters 4, 5, and 6 for us to learn together which king we are, who, who we follow, who, who we fall in the trap to being, and, and really how we kind of uh, work through our lives. If you've got your Bibles, it's 1 Samuel chapter 18. If you're online, go ahead and click the Bible button, and, and you can go open up 1 Samuel chapter 18. Go and open up that passage, and let's learn together a message I've entitled, Dodge... Dip, or dodge, duck, dip, dive, and? Dodge. dodge, duck, dip, dive, and? Really, it's who fights your battles. We feel so obligated to fight our own battles, don't we? We feel so obligated to voice our opinion and voice our, our, uh, our what we know and voice our against something or for something. I learned from my pastor years ago to, to speak about what I'm for more than what I'm uh, against. Speak about what I am for. It, what comes out of your mouth, is it commonly what you are for or is it commonly what you are against? I pose that question. Who fights your battles? Who stands up for you? Who, 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 who stands in the gap for you? Who is the person that stands in those moments? Of, it, when I was in high school, um, I, uh, I, I, I got into a, a, an almost fight. Anybody else ever get into an almost fight before? I wouldn't do well in a fight, but I've done really well in an almost fight. You see, God's given me a lot of gifts, and the main gift has been this thing called my voice. And I, I've got the innate ability to run it. You know what I mean? It, 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 no one's surprised. I've got the innate ability to pop off to people. And, and there was this one guy, he's got an extra chromosome, so yeah, he's got red hair, and, and he's like six foot three, six foot four. I'm all of 5'10", a buck 50, and, and here I am popping off to him, and, and he didn't receive it very kindly. Usually, people think it's funny. Or, 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 or Kyle's so cute, and he thought, um, I'm going to pummel you. And I just felt like, well, that was rude. I was just trying to make fun of you and, and point out these flaws that you have in your life. And, and now you want to beat me up? This isn't cool. And, and so he, he, he uh, 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 stands up against me at, at a high school dance. So there I am in a tux about to get beat up. Amen. And I'm standing there, and, and, and he's like, he's in my face. And, well, he's like, my chest is in his face. Let's go over there. I'm like, you know, like, you know, get, get beat up. And, and, and he's yelling at me, and, and, and he's saying really mean things. I was saying funny things. He was saying mean things. And so, you know, that's neither here nor there. And, and all of a sudden, his countenance changed. His posture changed. Where he was like, I'm going to beat you up. It's now, I think that you need to change the way you speak to people. And I'm like... Okay, like what changed? Like, like one second I'm about to give you, and all of a sudden, and I realize my, my, my six foot five Ramon friend is standing behind me. And so all of a sudden he realized, and Ramon's now yelling at him, telling him, if you got, if you beat up, if you're going to beat up him, you got to go through me first. Next thing you know, I find myself standing behind Ramon, like, what's up, dog? What's up, dog? You still trying to step to this? But, and like all of a sudden, because Ramon fought my battle for me. See, we feel so obligated to fight the world. We feel so obligated to stand. We feel so obligated. But what if we let God fight our battles? He's kind of good at it. He defeated 
sin. God, God, his son died and third day rose him from the dead. Like, if, if there's somebody that I want to battle for me, it's the one who created the world. It's the one who's been there since the beginning. It's the one who created me. It's the one who loves me. David, he gets this kind of awkward moment where King Saul wants him dead. And instead of reacting the way maybe you and I would, he reacts the way a humble servant who knows that God fights his battles will. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10 reads this. It says, the next day, a, a harmful spirit from God r- rushed upon Saul. Okay, that's a, kind of a strange sentence. I want to break that down because I don't want to skip over that moment. It's not that God brought a spirit on him. It's that the spirit of God left him. See, Saul is king. He is anointed to be king over Israel. He's the man. They say he's handsome. He's tall. He's victorious. He's the greatest king ever to live. He's unbelievable. He's got great kids. But what he did is he took his eyes off Jesus, and all of a sudden, everything changed. And so when he once went from, he once went anointed, no longer is he anointed. So I I want you to know this today. The Spirit of the Lord departed him. If God and his grace does not rule us, sin and Satan will have possession of us. If God's not ruling our lives, sin and Satan will have possession of our lives. I want you to know there is a battle for your life. There's a battle. The more we give in to the world and life, that battle is being won. But the more we give in to the presence of God, that battle is being won. It says he, he, he raved. Raved within his house while, while David was playing the, the lyre. Basically, like David's worshiping, and the idea of David worshiping drove Saul so crazy and so mad. As he did day by day, Saul had a, his spear in, in his hand, and, and Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. I want you to know, Saul's king, Saul's got, David's best friend is Saul's son, Jonathan. David's daughter confesses, uh, Saul's daughter confesses his love, her love for David. he's, He's driven to such a mad place because his eyes have fallen off Jesus. So here he's, spears are being thrown at him. You jump to 1 Samuel chapter 19. Okay, let's jump over to 1 Samuel chapter 19. And once again, Saul's throwing spears at him. And Saul sought to pin David to the wall w- with the spear, but, but, but he eluded Saul. So that he struck the spear into the wall, and David fled and escaped the night. D- D- David, he steps up and said, who fights your battles? Here's someone's throwing spears at him. Here's someone's trying to kill him. It's not like someone's like talking trash. Like they're trying to kill him. They're trying to end his life. And so it's not just this moment where it's a baby thing. It's a major thing. It's a life thing. It begins to talk, tra- it begins to try to kill him. And so, and he wants to allow God to fight his battles. Who defends your honor when someone speaks poorly about you? He, who, who speaks out against people who don't like, like you? you? Like, how do you stand up for yourself? Who fights your battles? I want to know this. We're exhausted by fighting right now. Like, like we're all in the same fight. There, 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 there's so many fights going on right now. We're exhausted by it. We're, we're wearied by it. We're anxiety, anxiety driven by it. Case in point, wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Black lives matter. Well, all lives matter. Blue, red. We're in this constant battle that our world is so divided and divisive. And if you're not tired of battling, you're living under a rock. You've got to miss what's going on right now. But who fights your battles? You, ch- you check that out? It's not that battles aren't happening. 
It's not that bad things are happening in the world. It's not that one side or this side is right. Who fights your battles? You give your life to Jesus, you begin to follow him, you begin to walk with him. Who fights your battles? I believe that my, day, my job today is to teach you how to dodge spears, how, how to dodge these things going on in our lives, how to dodge these moments, how, how, to, how to evade and how to avoid. And I learned it in a movie just years and years ago, and I want you to see what life, maybe your 2020 looks like, so far. If you're going to learn to be true dodgeballers, then you've got to learn the five D's of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. If you master the five D's, no amount of balls on earth can hit you. Yeah, um, shouldn't we, like, learn by dodging balls that are thrown at us, or...? That's what this sack of wrenches is for. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh! 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 <laughs> Any other questions? See, many of us, that wrench is 2020. And you're just like that guy, just rolling around. You got you didn't dodge it, you took it right to the face. I mean, like, we've got to realize, like. How do we dodge? How do we evade? How do we avoid? Bad things are going to happen. But what are you going to do? I want you, like, like, you're going to get fired. You're going to get broken up with. But um, you're, 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 you're going to have difficulties. You're going to have moments that you're like, what is going on in life? You're going to have these things in these times of our life. But how do you not let them ruin your life? They, 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 can, they can hit you. But how do they not pierce your heart? Pierce your heart. Like, how, do they not, how do they not harden your heart? How do they not change your life to such a degree? Those things are going to happen. And, and so I think sometimes we think things are spears that aren't. And I want you to recognize the difference between the two. Okay, so things that aren't spears. You have a boss. And they're making sure, and they're mad at you regularly because you show up to work um, late regularly. And they're and they're like, you know, they're sticking it to you and making you sure and letting you know that if you keep showing up late, you're gonna get fired. That's called a good boss. That's not a spear. That's you wake up on time and eat breakfast. Like like that's all that is. Okay, you you've got a parent and and, and they want you to listen and obey and you keep disobeying and not listening and, and you get grounded because of it. That's called. Oh, my gosh, what's it? Oh, it's called parenting. That's what, my, my bad. I mean, I mean, I remember when I was coaching soccer at GP, uh, I, I had one, one of my boys was like, was like man, your, your wife's such a difficult teacher. She's so hard on us. And I was like, well, like what does she do? I was kind of like relating with him. I was like, me too, man. And like, like <laughs> dude, I have this moment. And, 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 and he's, like, he's like, you know, she like makes me like do all my work. Okay, that's called teaching. It's kind of the whole reason why you go there for eight hours a day or online. I mean, like, like this is like normal. Those aren't spears. That's life. Like, that's all that is. Okay, what a spear actually is? Remember, David's life is being threatened. He's trying to kill him. Your teacher trying to get you to turn your homework in is not trying to kill you. Trying to make you better. Okay, um, threat, slander, rumor. Gossip, you're being wrong. David, Saul spending his life trying to kill David, that's a spear. That's a big deal. So we've got to gauge these moments a little bit and pick and choose those battles. And what do you do when someone throws a spear at you? I know. I'll have a great time. Someone throws a spear at me, I 100% believe I'm going to pick that thing up and go, oh, cool, you missed. And I am going to javelin it into their face. Like, that is what I'm, like, like I don't know why my personality is just this way. Like, uh, like, we'll be joking around, but the moment that I'm the brunt of the joke, I'll roll you under the bus. I'll, yeah, you'll get hit. I'll be, mm, I'm sorry. Like, like, that's just the way it is. It's, it's, you know, it's sick and it's twisted, but it's just my life. Like, like that's who I am because that's my response. That's my natural moment of response Everybody knows what to do when a spear is thrown at them. You throw it right back. David, he's the worst. He doesn't know what to do. The spear is thrown at him, and he, like, dodges it, then moves on. I'm like, David, you got to throw it back. I mean, take, for instance, what, what would we do right now? Okay. 
This is what this is what our world does right now. Remember, Second Corinthians, we do not wage war as the world does. Th- this is what this is what our world does right now. Oh, you want to wrong me? Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, 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 girl, I'm about to. Okay, dear Facebook, dear mask wearing. Can I get the music from Jimmy Found a little note? Second? Dear mask wearing person. No, that's not it. Delete, dear mask wearing moron. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. This is all. Oh, this is the love of Jesus. This is a. Oh yeah. I can't, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, well, but but there's but then there's the other side. There, there's the other side of it. Okay. Um, to the. Uh, oh, here we go. To the Safeway uh, shopper. No, that's not it. To the liberal not wearing a mask. I mean, like this is how we fight right now. This is what we do. You care for humanity, and they respond with just, how could you ever think that lives matter? We, we, like, are you, kid, are you kidding me? We, we write the Declaration of Independence, and we say that, that all lives matter, but, but a group in our world and in our country gets marginalized and all of a sudden we begin to speak out and say that black lives matter is like oh, you, are you, they don't until they fully matter our lives won't matter until it's equal until we love everybody until there's equality it doesn't get to be a narrative of the other side So we look at this story, but how do we not throw spears and love people? Because you're going to throw a spear at me, I'm like, oh, sucker. No, no, no. Who fights your battles? Who goes before? Who's already given his life for you? Who loves you? Because David's the worst. You're supposed to throw a spear back. By throwing a spear back, you're courageous and you're bold and you're a leader and you're kind of cool and it's awesome. I took that guy out. Oh, yeah, you don't let nobody mess with you. Who fights your battles? And you really don't want to mess with David. Remember, David's killed a bear, killed a lion, and Goliath, to which Saul was there when he killed Goliath. So you know this guy is truly mad when he can take down Goliath, but he's like, oh, I'm, he won't be able to get me. That's how crazed he is. And all he did was dodge. He probably ducked, dived, dipped, and dodged as well. But I mean, like, all he did was dodge. He, he didn't dodge and then yell back. He didn't dodge and then pull out a gun. He didn't dodge and then roll Saul under the bus. He dodged and he moved on. He dodged and he honored who was king. He dodged and he kept living his life. He dodged and he moved forward. See, your ability to avoid or evade gives God the ability to defend. I want you to check this out. You might not be winning battles in life because you're fighting all the battles. That's where you were supposed to go, oh, Oh, amen. Your ability to avoid or evade gives God the ability to defend. We sing Jesus take the wheel this way. Oh, and as long as the wheel's going this way, then yeah, yeah, Jesus, you can take the wheel. Yeah. But what if you let him live? Yeah. It's not that you can't be vocal, but are you vocal in love? It's not that you can't care, but as you're caring through the lens of Jesus. It's not that you can't go out and stand for people. Is it done with grace? Or is it done with opinion? See, your ability to avoid or evade gives God the ability to defend. See, this isn't a message. This is a message of hope. We've got to put our hope in knowing and our trust in knowing that God defends us. God loves us so much that he battled for us, that he sent his son to die for us. But we so often 
care more about being right than Jesus. We so often find ourselves with the spear in our hand of right instead of the love and the grace of Jesus. Even when you are right, can you keep your mouth shut? Even when you are right, can you love people? Even when you have been wrong, can you care for people? That's the battle-ready cry of this thing. He's actually really good at battling for us. He let his son die. He brought him back on the third day. He defeated sin. He defeated death. And he gave us life. That's the purpose. Because honoring God is more important than being I'll give you another chance for that. Honoring God is more important than being right. Honoring God is more important than being right. Post that. Share that. Disagree with someone like that. Be right like that. Honoring God is more important than being right. David was right, but he honored God. David lived in caves on the run from Saul, if you keep reading the story. And he was right, but he honored God because it's more important than being right. I wonder how often our life more importantly is being right than honoring God. When Jesus was on trial, he was right. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything unjust. He just loved people and healed people. But you know what he said when he was on trial? Nothing. You know what he said when he was on a cross? You're forgiven. And one of the two on his left and his right gave his life to Jesus and will be with people in, huma- in, in heaven. Because he didn't speak against, he spoke for. The power of our words, the power of our lives, Is it being dictated by what we are for or what we are against? I think it's the difference between us being preference-driven or principle-driven. My preference, oh, I'm going to spear you. Oh, oh yeah. I think that I'm good at it. I probably am good at it. I don't know. I've never thrown a spear before. I mean, probably have, but like, you know, like, 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 like physically. But do my preferences lead my life or do my principles lead my life? Do my preferences lead my life or do my principles lead my life? My preference, oh, man, there's no consequence for sin. You know, I'll have a a couple cocktails here and may hang out with some people. and Oh, yeah, do 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 a little thing. But my principles are found in the Bible. My principles are found in this thing. My principles give me guidelines. My principles give me purpose. My principles give me value. My principles give me character. My principles give me a voice and something I can stand on. So often, my preferences lead my life. The difference, do you make your decisions and do everything and converse based on your preferences or your principles? And it's, it's, you know, it's fine to get them confused sometimes. Uh, See, what cancel culture does, it's so popular language right now, cancel culture is trying to cancel grace, but nothing ever cancels grace. Yeah, yeah, come on, we'll stop responding there. Like, cancel culture is trying to cancel grace, but you can never cancel grace. Jesus already died. He already rose from the dead. He already forgave. You can't cancel that culture. You can't cancel the King of Kings. You can't cancel the Lord of Lords. You can't cancel a past. You can't cancel a future when it's good, when it's grace, when it's love, and it always wins. You don't get a say in that. What if we gave humanity more grace than they deserve? That'll cancel the negativity of our culture. That's the cancel that needs to happen. So who fights your battles? I'm going to give you three ways to avoid a spear. Three ways to avoid a spear. Spears are going to happen. Stuff's going to get thrown at you. Come on, 2020. Crazy things are going on. Filled with the news, filled with life. But you know what? You know what you want to know this? See, the craziness of 2020, you know what's consistent? God is still God. God is still good. Oh, man, it's crazy. This going on? God is still God. God is still good. Oh, do you see this? God is still God. God is still good. Oh, we're getting more cases? God is still God. God is still good. What if we lied on God is still God? God is still good. 
That's the narrative of the gospel where the world goes this way and that way and it's the barometer and, 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 and is, is, is a moving target. He's always consistent. He's always faithful. He's always there. He's always present. He's always loving. He's always kind. It's not a moving target. It's right there. Right there with you. Three ways to never get hit by a spirit. No, you dodge, you go matrix. I'm like Neo right now. Come on, here we go. Three ways to never get hit by a spirit. First one is this. Be skilled at avoiding spears, not throwing spears. See, the things you fix your eyes on will be the ways you live your life. Let me say this in a, maybe a cleaner way. Talk about what you are for, not what you're against. Love, not hate. Grace, not cancel. Mercy, kindness, honor, gentleness, self-control. Not the world. In the words of TLC, be a lover, not a fighter. And a real knockout. out. I mean, be a lover, not a fighter. Care for humanity. Don't fight against humanity. What's marriage like? You're either fighting for each other in marriage or you're fighting with each other in marriage. And in marriage, you'll do both. <laughs> and in life, you'll do both. But may we kind of recalibrate today, grab this principle, and allow God to lead us. Avoid throwing spears. Avoid being good at that. You know how you get good at that? What did Jesus do? Always ask yourself that. What did Jesus do? Jesus, tempted by Satan, 40-day fast, doesn't eat anything. The Bible says he was hungry. I wrote, like, no, duh, of course he is, 40 days. I got, like, 40 minutes, and I was like, I'd go for a snack. <laughs> no one told me that parenting, I'd be like a chef. No one told me that. No one told me that. Thank you for Instant Pot. I mean, so here, here all of a sudden, you're like, Jesus, he's hungry. It's 40 days later. Satan shows up, begins to tempt him. Tempt him. What does he do? Jesus doesn't say, I think. Jesus doesn't say, you know what, yeah, I, I, I've been thinking lately. Jesus responds with the Bible. Be good at avoiding spears by knowing the word of God. Je Jesus finds himself with some Pharisees. And they're, they're testing him. Jesus doesn't say, man, you guys, you guys suck. You're the worst. Jesus quotes the word of God. Jesus finds himself with this woman. She's caught in adultery, and these guys are wanting to throw rocks at her, and they're saying, man, you've done this, you've done that. You know what Jesus says? You guys shouldn't do that. Murder's bad. He quotes the Bible. See how often we can diffuse humanity with something that stands true and is tested through time. It is the same. He is the same. Be skilled at avoiding I'd say it like this. You put this in your notes. Be skilled at honor. Be skilled at honoring. Be skilled at honoring. Second way you dodge a spear, avoid spear throwers. Every avoider in the room that like, doesn't like conflicts, like, yes. <laughs> Been doing it for years. I'm still dating four different people from elementary and, and middle school. <laughs> I've successfully avoided them. You ever find, you ever find yourself, you, you don't like somebody? It's fine you don't like somebody. You just got to love them. And like, you, and, like, you're walking through Safeway, and you turn an aisle. You're like, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, you were... I mean, I, I've never, but I know humanity, you've probably done it before. I was walking the same way the other day, and I was like, even with the mask, they'll know who I am. I mean, like, no, nope, I'm messing with you. Because it's not that you avoid them physically, you avoid their spears spiritually. So often we want to avoid physically, but it's spiritually. That when people hurt you, does it harden your heart? Yeah. Does, it, does it bring you down to such a degree that you can't function? Avoid spear throwers. David was in the presence of Saul. Boy, avoided his spear. Moved on. Went on the run. The third way is this. This might be the most important one, okay? Third way to, um, did I go up there? <laughs> Drum roll, it's already there. Um, avoid a spear, throw, avoid the spear like this. Keep your mouth shut. This is crazy. This is like, I think it's the most important one because it's like the thing that I'm worst at. I like, I, I'm on the struggle with this one. 
This is the struggle for me. Like, keep your mouth shut. Like, I got opinions for your opinions. <laughs> and I'll back it up with my principles, sucker. Like, like you ever hear me that, Christian, Karen? I mean, like, you ever, like, find that? Keep your mouth shut. Because that's what the Bible says. It's not my opinion. It's my principle. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. It's the Bible, not me. Proverbs 18, 2. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. No pleasure. I've met this person. I've hung with this person. I've got the email from this person. I've argued with this person. I've wasted sideways energy. No pleasure in understanding. You, you feel like sometimes it's like talking to my kids. I'm like, McFly. They're like, what? Well, I'm good. No pleasure, but, but they'll express how they feel. How the, how the, their opinions on those things. We're going to finish with a, a Q and A in just a moment, but I want to encourage you with this. In, in closing, First Samuel chapter eighteen, verse twelve. See, so what happens to David? So David's quiet. David runs. David evades the spears. So then, so what does he do? Life's just terrible for him. No, 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 no. See, your honor will lead to victory. Check that. Your honor will always lead to victory. Will always lead. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but, but had departed Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and, and, and made him a, a commander of a thousand. And, and he went out and came in before the people. Verse 14, read this. And David had what? He... You know, David reeled down and out, and that was the end of his life. You know, we never heard from him again, and, you know, live with the wolves. No, no, no. David honored, and God gave him success in all undertakings, for the Lord was with him. See, it's better to have the Lord with you than be right in the world of the eyes, or in, in the eyes of the world. It's better to have the Lord with you in those moments. See, God has fought for you. God is fighting for you. God will fight for you. Your life is not a mistake. Your life is not broken. There's broken moments, but God is still God, and God is still good. Nothing changes that. The stress and the chaos of the world doesn't change. God's still God, and God's still good. The stress of life, the craziness of families, the finances, God is still God, and God is still good. Go and stand to your feet. I'll encourage you with this as, as we worship. We're going to worship one song, and I'm going to come back and do a Q&A, come break down this message a little bit. But I want you to know this, that the two times that Saul was so mad that he would throw a spear at Saul or at David, it's because David was, he was doing what? Who was listening? Who was doing what? He was worshiping. You want to gain victory, worship your way through it. You want to work through isolation, work your way through it. You want to to claim victory over your marriage, worship through it. You want to claim victory for your children, worship through it. Anything you do, you know, I'm tired of, you know, I'll cancel. I just can't worship at home. You worship anywhere. It might look different. See, I think why we don't want to worship at home because we don't want to express our passion because we're kind of confused whether we have any for the Lord. We can worship in this room, but can you worship at home? You don't want to look like a fool. No one's asking you to look like a fool. Everyone's asking, God's asking you, do you love me? Will will you stand with me? Will you be with me? That's the difference. I get it socially. It's kind of like, oh, into your mercy, Lord. Yeah. But what if we let ourselves, like David, look like a fool 
but at least he honored God. Oh, man, I just, I just rather, I just rather. So pick your battle. What's your battle right now? Come on, and let's cry out to our Savior. What's your battle right now? Anxiety, depression, loneliness, mask, no mask. Who matters? What, what is it? Let's value the battle, but let's take it to our Savior. It's so real. Let's walk through it and allow God to speak to our lives. Come on, begin to sing this out. Palm of your hand. Be in the palm of God's hand today. This is the song that's going to just, just change your moment right now. It's going to change your home. It's going to change your living room. It's going to change your car. It's going to change the presence of the room. Come on, let's begin to worship out.
going to head back into worship in just a minute here. But before we do, Kyle and I want to have a little conversation. First of all, your message was amazing. So good. He's like, mm, yeah, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, all for him. Glory. Um, <laughs> if you guys have yet to read A Tale of Three Kings, Ooh. this book, guys, it is so, so good. Um, but we want to talk about your message. So I feel like there was so much good stuff in there, but it's something that's easier to read or see on paper or say and believe yeah. but to actually like live that out it's is like way better to preach ridiculous terrible yeah. to live crazy really difficult <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure way for better sure. to preach yeah so we want to talk about this so as a leader i mean obviously you lead a church we have people here who i mean we're all leading to mm -hmm. some capacity whether we're yeah. leading in our homes Good. leading in our marriage leading in our workplace whatever that looks like there are so many spears coming at us from the left and the right, from all over. So mm -hmm. how do we lead well during this time? Um, I, I always, always want to look more like Jesus, which is such a pastor sentence. So, such a, I, I'm, a, I'm an apprentice of Jesus. Okay. But the way that we lead ourselves privately will be the way that we lead ourselves publicly. The way it'll all... You can you can separate them to a degree, but they'll always bleed into each other. The true you is the true you, and so I, I always believe the way that you lead by uh, avoiding spears will be your by your your quiet time time with Jesus, your your um, your worship, um, your confession, your your grace for others, um, and so your care for others. And so what's in check there? is always going to be the presence of God. Because Saul's mistake was distancing himself from the presence of God to the point where God's like, I'm not with you anymore. You've denied me. And so, and, and that's where all of a sudden he went mad and he went crazy um, and, and lost him. So I always come back to those, 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 those probably main three things. Um, but leading, and lead with grace. But the way you live privately will be how you live publicly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love that. It always starts in the presence of God. Always, I feel like it always. reminds me, I mean, you mentioned it briefly, but in 2 Corinthians 10 where he says, mm -hmm. you know, we don't wage war as the world wages war. Yeah. We, we fight with the spirit, not with the flesh. It's yeah. so good. Um, so what do you think, what are like three things, your go-tos when spirits are coming your way? Like practically yeah. speaking. Yeah, I'm such a broken record, um, which I think is so necessary. Like, Let's not confuse the narrative. The narrative will always be um, worship, um, will always be my Bible, will always be prayer, and will always be community. It'll always be those things. So I say the first thing, worship, and people are like, well, Jesus, Louise, I'm online right now. can't worship. Calm down. We're not being religiously oppressed. You're missing an hour of the local church every single week. Let's, I feel like we're building it to be, we love a negative narrative. We love a negative narrative. Watch the news. What sells? So the church is being oppressed. These negative, no, no, no. What does the Bible say about worship? Not what does your version of worship look like? Opinion versus preference. Okay, that preference, principle. What does the Bible talk about worship? Okay, the worship would be an outpouring of your spirit to praising and, and, and edifying God. I worship more in my car. I worship running. I love I love running with worship music in my in my my AirPods. The pros because you cancel the noise and boom, really get the beat. <laughs> Shout out Steve Jobs. And I find myself I find myself worshiping in those moments probably more than anything. My the Bible. Principles, principles, principles. Someone asked me recently, do you really believe everything in that? Like, yeah, man. Every, every, every last word. It's living and active. My prayer life. Now, I'm not a, um, 
I'm like, I'm like a, I'm like a Labrador when it comes to prayer. I'm like squirrel. I got to write notes. I pray when I run. I, I've sat on a chair and a couch and prayed maybe two times in my life and lasted longer than 82 seconds of like actual prayer. And I was like, man, Brussels sprouts are terrible. Like, like, are you just going to go anywhere? And so, and then, and then community. If there's anything that we are missing, calm down with, like, not being oppressed from, um, yeah, we can get to, like, political stuff and, and resisting and all those kinds of things, and that's neither here, that's not what we're talking about. Um, but humanity craves humanity. That's why we'll never survive online. We'll never. We crave each other. I think even most people in the room right now, you might be, you might be here for worship and, and a message, but really you're here, here for humanity more than anything else. It doesn't offend me. Um, I, I think that's really important. So yeah, the, the, like the main things for my life. Um, I couldn't tell you the last day that I haven't listened to Palm of Your Hand. I find myself every day, that moment on the video when, when Jared begins to sing, I think they call it a bridge. It's just like so, it's like six minutes and 50 seconds into the song and it's so good. <laughs> He knows the exact time. I do, like, I yeah. do. It's like 6.52 it's actually. It's so but. money at that point. And I'm like, it gets me. It says freedom a bunch of times and it's so good. You say freedom? I don't remember. I don't remember what you say, but it's really good. <laughs> Shakes his head. What no. do you say? What do you say? What else? Yeah, he says freedom. <laughs> They're playing a G chord and a C chord and a D. All right, all right. <laughs> So good. Um, yes, all those things are yes, amazing. Yes. I feel like even, I mean, we see in the Bible all over where worship is a battle cry. It is yes. a form of warfare. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even like I think of like Jericho where God tells him to walk around this building seven times. And Take all the people in Jericho walls, are like, yeah. what the heck are they doing? <laughs> and they're like, God told us to. And then they, mm -hmm. they shout their trumpets and the yeah. walls come tumbling down. And I mean, that's people in their yeah. homes right now. Yeah. A husband or a wife or a kid might be like, what the heck are you doing? I'm, I'm battling. I, I'm, I'm in a battle right now with myself or with the world. I'm in a battle. They look like fools walking around seven times, but walls fell. You want walls to break down in your life? Worship. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, okay, so you said you said the line: "Your ability to avoid and evade mm -hmm. gives God the ability to defend." Mm -hmm. So I want to dissect that a little bit. What does that look like? I mean, I know we live in a pretty conflict-averse world yeah. outside of social media, where people say what they want. Mm -hmm. um, but what does it look like to avoid and evade without ignoring? Wonderful. Um, your we these personalities are so funny. Um, some people like conflict like like they get riled up and they're all about it and some people just can't handle even like the like we're talking about conflict they're sweating um and uh and so Saul the, st the story preaches the bible preaches really well you guys Saul took his eyes off Jesus when we say avoiding and evading it doesn't mean Christianity and following Jesus, you're passive. Just take it on the chin. Be kind. Don't do anything else. Can never confront. No, 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 no. My, my, my God stood against the religious leaders. My God spoke out against wrongdoing. My God flipped tables when the church was acting a fool. So avoiding and evading is talking about in the context of when you're being attacked, how to deflect moments that doesn't bring you down to removing you from a relationship with Jesus. Saul watched David rise and his eyes got fixed on David. So it says that was the spears coming out of him, jealousy, rage, comparison. And so those were the spears being thrown at Saul and they pierced his heart. And he left the presence of God. Where David was physically, spears were thrown at him. And he entered in the presence of God. So I'm not, I'm not saying your social media shouldn't say what you stand for. Stand, man, we got to stand up. We got to rise. We don't, 
what we teach our kids, what we teach the next generation, how we vote, all those kinds of things. Come on, I'm game. But are you doing it in love and grace? See, grace has the juxtaposition of truth. And they can't be void of each other. They got to be married together. They got to have each other. Got to have each other. But does your grace have truth and does your truth have grace? Everybody knows grace person. They're so nice and they're loving and they're kind. The moment truth comes around, they're like, oh no. We know truth person. You got black eyes because truth person. But they didn't have any grace. They got to be together. They got to be together. So stand, stand strong. I'm standing, man. I'm speaking out. I'm not, I'm not here to take it. I'm here to give love. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. I feel like it's so telling because like Jesus, the way that he lived, he fought for justice, but yeah. he always led in love. Always. Like, yeah, it's so good. Um, so we're going to finish up our conversation here. Yeah. But let's pretend something really fast. Let's pretend that I am a spear thrower, which I am most definitely not. I've never sure. thrown a spear in my life. Sure. But let's pretend I am. What do I do? If you're a spear thrower, here's one of the greatest ones. If you're a spear thrower, God loves you. Like, God loves you. God loves everybody. Like, spear throwers aren't always jerks. Like, let's reel that in. Like, it's not the loudest person in the room. It's not always that. It can be. But spear throwers have to know the, that, that there is grace for them. See, it's one thing to know that God loves you, but you do, do you know that humanity loves you? If people are going to ever stop throwing spears, it is always going to be because they received grace from humanity. Always received care. So when someone's throwing a spear, and, and if you're a spear thrower, God loves you. But there's also grace and the ability to be wrong and to still be loved. And, that, and that's the difficulty with like, you know, we talked about it earlier a little bit, just like cancel culture. So it's a popular phrase right now. Maybe you're unfamiliar with it, but I think what's so important about acknowledging what cancel culture is, is it's canceling, it's trying to cancel grace. It's not saying that bad things didn't happen and those people shouldn't be punished for what things happen and there's consequences in this world, but there's always grace and grace is the greatest truth that will always lead to light, always lead to light. So if you're a spirit thrower, there's grace, there's love. And I would, I would highly suggest find people in your life that you can talk to about. I was, golf, I was golfing my friend Friday. It took the second hole for me to confess something that's going on in my life. He's safe. He's one of my best friends. We each drove three hours to get to Yakima to sit down and to golf together and spend time together. By the second hole, I was like, hey, man, this is going on in my life. Da, 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 da. This is my spear. I'm throwing spears. And we just began to dialogue about it and converse about it. And I was shown grace. He wasn't like, you should take your own card. He was like, oh, that's not the best. But that was true. And I received grace. Yeah. So I, I think church, we've got to receive grace in this moment. There's people online, there's people in this room right now who you're hearing this message and you're like, man, I've, I, I'm, a spe- I'm a spear thrower. I don't have, I don't have any grace. But there always is grace. There's always truth. There's always life. Sure, you stay in the room right now. And if you're online, I want you to know, I want to give a salvation moment for you to meet Jesus, for you to give your life to him. It would be confessed with your mouth, believe in your heart. Jesus Christ is Lord. That he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose from the grave on the third day. And because of that, I am forgiven, that I have life and I have it abundant and I have truth. If that's you on right, uh, online right now or even in this room right now, go and close your eyes if you're in the room. If you're in the room and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you the count of three. One, it's the best decision you'll ever make. There's no other decision that changes your destiny but this decision because it's the truth that Jesus died and he rose from the grave. Two, there's just so much hope, so much life when you have hope in life, when you have Jesus. Maybe you even feel right now, I think I've done this before. Don't think you've done, know you've done. And God will give you God will give you life in just a moment. Three. If you're in the room right now and you want to raise your hand, receive Jesus. Amen. Anybody else in the room? You're online right now. Come on, we just applaud you. We welcome you in the kingdom. You're the greatest. It's the greatest decision of your life. 
Father, we thank you for everyone in the room raising their hand. We thank you for online. We thank you that you are all about grace because it's who you are. You are truth and you are life. We love you and we thank you. Today we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died for us, that he rose for us, and that he gave his life for us. Come on, let's begin to battle out in worship. Let's begin to praise God. Come on, even in the room right now, can we just give the Lord an applause and thank you for lives to being handed over for the truth that you are, that you're available right now for our lives.